what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi fantasy film, Beyond the Edge. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with two men, Harold and Abe, aboard a spaceship. Harold is a pilot while Abe is a scientist. The two men were picked by the government to go on a years-long voyage to find out what is beyond the edge of space. The two fight about the protocol for when a member of the crew starts acting irrational. One of them shoves the other across the table, which triggers an alarm and sets off an emergency alarm throughout the room. Harold wakes up and starts his day doing his regular routine. Abe wakes up shortly after, due to the loud music that Harold plays during his morning exercise. While Harold uses the stationary bike, Abe makes his morning coffee with the condiments that they are provided with during their time aboard the spaceship. Later, while Harold is logging the data that they have just gathered, Abe snoops around the locker area and becomes intrigued with a pair of aviators. He plays around in the control room while Harold tests out more experiments in the lab. Harold looks outside their ship and sees the endless black mist that awaits them. He heads back to the common room where he finds Abe slacking off in the coach with his pair of aviators. He asks Harold why he brought them to the spaceship, considering their peculiar situation traveling to the edge of space. He replies that the aviators are simply standard issue and are handed out to all pilots. Harold joins Abe on the couch, but he quickly leaves the room when Abe starts fooling around and asking him obnoxious questions. Abe continues watching TV and spoils himself with a generous amount of condiments from their kitchen. Harold inspects the control room and Abe follows him shortly. He makes a snarky remark to Harold and leads him to his work. Harold comes back to the bedroom and does a quick exercise before he goes to sleep. Abe tells him good night but is ignored. A new day arrives and Harold does the same routine as usual. Abe sleeps through the loud music that is being played. Harold comes to the lab and does more research and data logging. Harold drops his pen in one of the aquariums holding an eel. He reaches down and retrieves his pen, but his dog tags remain in the water. Suddenly, the power on the ship goes out, which awakens Abe. He panics and calls out to Harold. The power comes back on, and Abe enters the lab to investigate. He finds Harold slumped on the floor, not unconscious. A few hours later, Abe has taken care of Harold, but realizes that he will no longer wake up. He puts Harold inside a body bag and struggles to drag him across the hall. He finally reaches the room where they eject objects into space. He puts Harold's body inside, but finds it hard to push the body to eject him. He finds it hard to use the control room and asks the computer what the distance of the ship is from Earth. The computer tells him that the distance is unidentifiable. Abe falls asleep in the ejection room. He wakes up and accidentally pushes the button, which ejects Harold's body into space. He hurriedly goes up to the viewing room and sees Harold's body floating through space. He starts to panic at the realization that he has to endure this trip alone through the endless void of space. The ship continues in a straight line across the void, but suddenly encounters a storm in space. A giant snake-like creature wraps itself around the spaceship and looks through the window directly at Abe. He thinks that he is just seeing things and sits back down. He rewatches old interviews that he and Harold did years earlier. It is revealed that aside from reaching the edge of space, the secondary objective they had was researching the effects of zero gravity on the flight patterns of honeybees. But unfortunately, the bees died, which rendered their results inconclusive. Later on in the interview, the interviewer's connection with them is suddenly cut off, but the signal is restored. They were then asked if they are closer to reaching the end of the universe. Abe tells the interviewer that they have no idea how long the trip will be. The tape ends, and Abe considers hanging himself. He takes one last look at a picture of his wife, but suddenly the ship shakes, which pushes him out of the chair, almost killing him because of the noose. The ship once again violently shakes, saving Abe. He goes to the windows and sees a bright blinding light through them. He's amazed at the strange situation before him. A flashback shows when Abe was still undergoing screening by the US military before he goes on the mission to the edge of space. He was checked if he is mentally and physically fit for the trip, and was also asked questions about the papers and theories that he has published. Later during the conference, they announced that Harold will be coming along as the pilot, and they both will be undertaking the most advanced scientific mission the planet has ever done. During another health exam, Abe passed out because of stress. Harold helped him out and encouraged him to get stronger because of the stress during the takeoff. Another flashback happens, this time during an electrical problem on the ship. Harold managed to fix the problem manually, despite the system failing to aid him. Later in the lab, Harold fed the electric eel, despite it being explained by Abe as a breach of protocol, which is very unlike him. He went to the common room later and got into another verbal match with Harold. He noted that Harold gets mad all often. Abe went to the viewing room and saw a galaxy in the far distance. 
We cut to another flashback where Abe checked the inventory for their food and put an empty container in the ejection room. Harold was busy at work when Abe checked on him and told him that he didn't have to do any of the maintenance because the ship flies itself automatically. Suddenly, a red alarm sounded and Harold tried to press the button, but Abe stopped and told him to take a risk sometimes instead of following the protocol. He became infuriated and punched Abe in the face. Abe laughed, saying that the button stopped alarming and yet the ship still stands. He told Harold that it doesn't matter if they breach procedure, the ship would still fly itself. Harold entered the viewing room and saw the many galaxies and stars in the distance. He then entered the kitchen to look for food and realized that the sardines had gone missing. He confronted Abe about the missing sardines and he told Harold that he sent them into space earlier. Harold tore the picture of Abe's wife and then left. Harold went to bed while Abe was watching TV. However, Abe started to hear voices. He investigated and then suddenly remembered the time before launch where they had a toast. He came back to the kitchen and ate one of the packets of food. Harold made him coffee in the morning and proceeded to do his usual morning routine. Abe conducted research on the cause of death of the honeybees during their experiments, but found nothing that would yield results. At the end of the day, Abe sat by the window and fell asleep looking at the stars. The next day proceeded as usual, with Harold doing his morning routine. This time, Abe didn't oversleep and started his day with Harold. The days went by, with Abe slowly sinking into a routine he finds to be boring. One day, Harold looked for Abe in the lab, but found out he wasn't there, which is very unusual. Abe hadn't left the kitchen the entire day and continued to sleep the rest of the day. In the morning, Abe asked Harold to fix the pinball machine, but he didn't respond. He attempted to fix the machine himself, but ended up making it worse. Harold fed the eel before he came back to the kitchen and asked if Abe managed to fix the pinball machine, to which Abe responded that he wasn't able to. Abe visited the honeybee colony one day and got them ready for the next harvest of honey. Harold worked on the ship's maintenance as usual, despite already being told numerous times that the ship can fly and maintain itself. Abe conducted more experiments on the bees and then studied the electric eels, but still got no good results. He looked into the window and saw the empty void. He took out a picture of his wife and reminisced. Later, he revealed to Harold that the honey was almost ready to be harvested, which excited him. Harold tried to set the new high score for the pinball machine that Abe finally managed to fix, but couldn't quite beat it. Harold did his routine as usual. Abe woke up on time and told Harold that it was time to harvest the crops and honey, which excited Harold. He went down to storage and got extra pieces of bread for the occasion. Abe inspected the honey that the bees produced, while Harold asked the computer about what goes well with honey and bread. One of the bees managed to escape, and Abe called for Harold's help. The bees swarmed around Abe's beard. Later, Harold came to the window and asked Abe how he does this every single day. Abe then asked Harold for the reason why he agreed to join the mission in the first place. Harold answered that because the country asked him to, which means he was obligated to serve. Harold also revealed that his family received tax break benefits, which urged him to take it. Abe then told him that the reason why he took the mission was because of the millions of possible realities in the known universe that could be discovered if he took the mission. Later, Abe set a new high score with the pinball machine, which impressed Harold. He told him that he was almost maxing out the score the machine can calculate. They both sat down for dinner, feasting on the honey they harvested and pairing it with bread. Abe then asked Harold if what he said about the tax break was true because he didn't receive any when he was offered. Harold remarked that Abe really just came aboard the mission for the benefit of the advancement of human science. Harold asked about his wife, but Abe told him that she had left him. Abe woke up earlier than usual, which surprised Harold. He played with the pinball machine and became focused in an effort to break the machine's high score counter. He managed to break it and both of them jumped out in joy. An alarm beeped suddenly, which made both of them panic. Later, they found out that some of the bees died. Later, Abe woke Harold up and he asked if something was wrong. He told Harold that he cannot sleep. He shared with Abe that as a kid, he didn't sleep well either and he told him to just relax and he'll eventually fall asleep. He told Harold that his wife is the reason why he cannot sleep and told him stories about her and how he fell in love with her. One day, Harold found Abe's journal near the windows and he took it. He read it while he made his way to Abe. He told Harold to hand him some blueprints on the table while he tried to figure something out in the control room. Harold told him to get down from there, but he refused, causing Harold to tackle him to the ground. Harold revealed that Abe's journal contains detailed sketches of him, to which Harold explains that he gets flashes of memories about Harold's death. He also revealed that he drew many sketches of the bees dying, which later turned out to be true. Abe told him that he gets memories that briefly tell him the fate of something, which later becomes a reality. 
Abe tries to explain, but Harold touches the eel tank, which kills him. It becomes clear that as the ship goes deeper through space, time and reality becomes blended together, and Abe is experiencing multiple universes unfolding simultaneously. Abe rips apart the control room, which causes the ship to shake violently. He goes to the windows and sees that the ship crashed into the barrier of space, effectively sending them beyond the edge of space. The movie ends with two strangers from a different reality on the same mission as Harold and Abe, but this time, the ship violently shakes and malfunctions. One of the men tries to fix the ship, but ends up cutting the wrong wire, condensing the ship into nothing. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.